I still don't have all the data unless they talk to me. I can literally click two buttons and get all the data I want to of any subdivision in my area. Now I have all the data like that. Hey, good to see everybody. Um, where are you guys located? We're out in uh, Massachusetts, right outside Boston, about 15 minutes. Some of us actually live in Boston. Uh, we're a team of eight. Uh, we're at Compass and our team's the movement group. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. So what can I do to help you guys? So, I mean, we, we've, you know, we've sort of battled this, you know, we, we, first of all, we follow all your social media. We love what you do. We love what you're putting out there. It's genuine, authentic content. And that's what we're all about. Like we, we, we work hard. We don't, you know, kind of deal with all the fluff and, and complain in the nonsense. We put our nose to the grindstone and work, but we're, we're kind of coming up short with obviously what everyone else's pain point is, which is inventory levels, um, you know, and I will admit to be the first one that we are a fairly, li a high, we're a listing heavy team. We work with a lot of buyers, but we're listing heavy, but we could always add on more business. We have the assets to do it. We have the knowledge to do it. We have the skill sets. And obviously we dabble with the phone, uh, the cold calling, but you know, we just want a little bit more guidance because we have the social media locked down. We're not worried about our social media content. We are predominantly one of the, the better teams around sort of, you know, north of Boston, Boston proper and Massachusetts in general. So we have the the social media aspect all down, but we need to get a little bit more gritty with getting listings, getting uh, sellers from, you know, uh, opposed to our SOI. We just want to get sellers just from, you know, random places, I guess, if you will. Walk me through being a listing, listing heavy team, but yet the problem is lack of listings. Right. So, I mean, we want to create more inventory. I mean, we're putting on more listings every week. We'll put on like one to two listings a week and okay. they're selling just as quick as they're going. And, you know, we're looking down the line saying like, you know, quarter two, quarter three, our pipeline is as full as we want it to be. So mm -hmm. as much as we're listing heavy, we can always do a lot more. I mean, we're a team of eight. So for instance, if we're putting on two new listings a week, okay, you know, we're not necessarily having everybody included in those listings so we want to ramp it up where we can have three five seven eight listings going on you know per per week to keep everybody busy okay and then everybody on the team is basically um like are there roles is there a listing agent buyer's agent you know isa stuff like that or is everybody just kind of an agent on the team who has the ability to go out and list sell etc so Ryan on our team is our team administrator. He helps us with the back end. He helps us with showings. And he's also a sales rep as well. Um, I have a personal transaction coordinator. That's an online TC. And, you know, we have, we're compromised of, of, of seven sales, you know, eight sales reps. We're all in sales, um, you know, but again, we're just looking to add on more business. And I know that sounds so general, but like I said, yeah, there's there's no roles of listing agent, buyer agent. Everyone's basically a sales agent. Sales agent. Some okay. do more rentals just because that's where they're at. Um, but there's no like specific list agent or or buyer agent. I think no. depending on where they're at with their careers, some people are more buyer heavy, some people are more list heavy. And so it's up to each team member to go out and basically build their own brand and and create their own database and do their own deals. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, the way that we look at it is like this. Everybody is a 1099. Obviously, they're on our team. They're leveraging, you know, our brand, our assets, what we're able to help them with. But obviously, we want to be able to provide more listings and, and just more general business. So, you know, whether our lead capture comes from our SOI or open houses, obviously, we got to make it happen. You know, more we got to we got to bring more inventory to the table, I think is our pain point. You know, the the um, listings come from sellers that choose an agent they want as, as, when they decide they want to sell. It's real simple. Um, so how do they choose the agent that they want to represent them when they decide to sell? Well, somebody that has established a relationship with them pre-decision, right? Somebody that has right. built that trust up to that point. You know, a lot of coaches and trainers will you know, get into, uh, you know, like taking an expired setting, setting an appointment and like closing them right then and there when, you know, it happens, but it isn't necessarily a way to build your business. It's a way just to get a quick deal. And you actually really crush the chances of doing so much long-term business, which is really where the money's at, right? The long tail yeah. of these relationships turn into tens and tens of deals. 
and you're really kind of crushing a lot of the relationships, just trying to close a deal today with people you don't even know. And most agents are trying to convert before they connect. Um, and so we have to get in the mindset that our job is basically to create as many relationships with property owners in our market as humanly possible. Okay. Do we already know this or am I telling you something new? No, not new. No, that's definitely not. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to dissect the entire situation for you guys. So if you guys already know that in order to get the most listings, you have to have the most relationships with property owners in the market. Then my question is, what are you guys doing on a daily basis to, um, to procure as many new relationships with property owners in your new market as humanly possible? What actions are you taking daily to systemize a, a way that guarantees new relationships with property owners in your market every day? I think that's where we sort of come down to like having a faulty system and sort of like a systematic approach. Like we are very heavy on social media and we're almost too reliant on that. Like we're, we're giving a lot, but we're not getting back as much. Um, okay. 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 A lot. Let's, I mean, okay. Let's hang out there for a second. Okay. Um, what are you doing on social media? And, and if you're so social media heavy, you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate on this because what I have to do is I have to rearrange how you guys are thinking about your business. Okay. So on social media, what are you doing and why aren't you collecting data? Because the bottom line is, if you're telling me that you're just putting out social and you're not getting a lot in return, that tells me that you're doing social wrong, right? Social needs to be a platform that you collect data and then call people, convert if possible, and then remarket to forever. So are, so either you're not collecting data or you, you're not collecting enough data. You're not getting enough leads from social media to really make a, to really move the needle in your business. Um, or, or, or you're not putting out enough content. You're not engaging with people. So there's a breakdown in your social media um, strategy somewhere. So before we move, before we could get back on the, how do we, how do we put systems in place to just churn listings? Let's break the social media thing down first. What are you doing from top right. to bottom? I think we can, I can speak for everybody on this. We do a lot of educational content and we're basically providing that to the masses. I personally have been doing that for over seven years. I've okay. done last year, probably close to $20 million of business on social media in my okay. market average price point is probably like six to 800,000. Okay. So that's, we, we, we've done a, a fair share on social media, but like we're putting out a lot of educational content. Now, something that you mentioned and honed <laughs> on is consistency. I personally stay very consistent with that we're trying to hone in and preach to everybody that you have to stay consistent. Now mm -hmm. I want to ask you when you talked about the data, I mean, are you mm -hmm. referring to like when you're receiving a DM, you're basically just throwing these people in your database, even if they're just like a quick comment or because the way we see it is people are calling us, Hey, I, I want to buy, I want to sell. So that's a warm mm -hmm. lead coming to me directly. The indirect comments of like, Oh, that's like a cool property or like they're trying to just kind of engage. Are you referring to the people that more so are engaging with you that you're reaching out to on like a daily basis that you're putting Any, anybody, anybody, everybody like, so when people engage with you, your next step is, is to pursue that conversation to see what it is that they're trying to do. If anything, why they're trying to do it. If they already have an agent they're working with, Right. So that you can figure out what it is you can do to help them accomplish whatever they're trying to accomplish. The data is their email, their cell number, what property they already own, stuff like that. Right. Um, these platforms need to be used as a platform. See, if, if this is an e-commerce business, you don't have to talk to anybody. Your product's there. They click it. They like it. They buy it. Boom. You don't have to, you know, you're selling supplements. You're not talking to anybody. Uh, when you're selling real estate, real estate, think of real estate more as a high ticket sales uh, product. You know, think of it as a coaching program that's $20,000. You know, nobody's going to buy a $20,000 coaching product without talking to a sales guy to get some questions answered to see if they want to move forward. Same thing here. They're paying you $20,000 to sell their house. This is a high ticket sales product. Okay. Mm -hmm. And until they talk to someone, see all the funnels need to be, if you look at these high ticket sales, um, coaching products. They don't have the price on the landing page. They have click here to set up a call. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, same thing here. Like it needs to be a funnel that leads to a conversation, right? Whoever's having that call. I don't know you, you, you know, the way you guys team set up, I'm not sure how all the dynamics are, but somebody has to be talking to someone and we needed to be talking to people at a very high frequency in order to close the highest amount of transactions. Um, hmm. so just collecting data to then talk to people, if it's a DM back and forth, great. Ask all these same questions in the DM, right? But until we know what someone's trying to do, why are they trying to do it? So many agents are playing just on the surface, right? It's like, I want to buy something. Okay. What do you want to buy? Let me send you some properties. Let's go look at some properties, but they fail to actually ask why they're looking to buy. And so therefore they don't even know what the motivation is or why they're even trying to do when they want to do it, how they want to do it. None of that stuff. You know, I want to sell. Okay, cool. Want to kind of come look at the property? No. It's like, okay, why are you looking to sell? So then you can figure out if the next step is to come look at the property. Maybe not. So that's one thing that um, agents are doing wrong right then and there. They're not going deeper with the process of discovery of what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, just for the sake of time, you guys get the point of the social media thing. You guys need to be more intentional around, right? Being detectives, doing discovery, collecting data, remarketing. You got to get these people off the social platforms and onto your platform via email and text messaging, right? You own those databases. You can't control the 5% organic reach on Instagram versus the 90% organic reach in your email database. Whereas if your Instagram gets hacked and your account disappears, you've still got them on email. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. So yeah, you've got to get really good at creating your own database outside of these platforms. I don't know if you guys do that or not, but you, you have to be very intentional with grabbing these people off the platforms and getting them into your database. Meanwhile, continuing to put out content and staying in front of them on the social platforms that just adds to the fact that you're also emailing them. You know, they, you email them once a week on the same day of the week, they see it every week. Um, it means something versus if they don't engage with your content, you could be posting every day and not seeing a single post for months. They forget who you are. They get the emails. Um, you got to be hitting them from all different, all different angles. So are you guys doing like an email campaign to your database consistently? Stuff like that. I think mostly just like newsletters. What's up? Yeah. I think mostly like monthly newsletters, but outside of that, okay. I'm not sure if hey, monthly, okay. monthly is like you're losing business to the guys that are doing weekly on the same day of the week, every week. And then what's a monthly newsletter? What's in it? Some of it's compass, pre, you know, pre-made compass stuff. Okay. Like, stop that's, right that's there. My... Stop right there. Yeah, that's, exactly. That doesn't work at all because they're getting the same email with the same compass generic stuff that isn't helping anyone from three other agents at the exact same time. And now it's degrading your brand because they're like, Oh, three emails from three different agents with the same exact subject and info. Um, it's gotta be your opinions on what's happening inside information about what your buyers and sellers are saying in the current marketplace. Um, deals you think are really good. New listings, restaurants around town you went to and give your experience or email back for a chance to win a gift card. Um, market stats, you know, events and developments coming into the area and how you think it's going to impact the market. Um, your opinions on stuff, sitting down and spending time each and every week on an email on the same day of the week forever to your entire database. It will multiply and expand and, and completely blow your business up really fast. And then you'll see the power of this and then you'll keep doing it. And three to five years later, you're like the number one team in Boston and everybody's like, how'd you do it? And you're like a weekly email. And they're like, oh yeah, right. But that's exactly how you did it. Um, so that's very important. Would you separate it? Would you separate no, it at all? No, like, no, no. Not based on the the area? Or no, like that. no, no. What? Because then it's not scalable. Now we're spending time doing five emails instead of one. You could put different areas on your email. Like you can have, you know, your email, your thoughts, and then you could have like a box, you know, like halfway down on the right or something that, um, that is like, you know, click on your area and then it has the five different yeah. areas. And then those yeah. links go to a dedicated web page on your website that yeah. tells them everything you want them to know. New listings in that area, good deals in that area, stuff going on in that area that's automated. That way you have those same links every week 
And then everybody feels like, oh, okay, he's covering the Boston, the greater Boston, you know, West side, whatever. And you got those different links. That way you keep it one email to your entire database. Now you can, uh, now you can um, scale, right? Because if you start doing individual, then it gets to where it's just, now you're back to, you know, non-scalable. Yeah. And you're just putting your opinions and maybe just even like your experiences over the weekend of, Hey, I went to these open houses. This is what the traffic was like. Uh, exactly, bro. Exactly. Here, let me send you this. All right. This breaks down the weekly email. And also this is my last, the last 11 emails, la last 11 weeks of emails that I did. So you can right. see exactly what I'm doing. Um, my, I've been doing mine since 2007. It's literally the reason why I close a hundred deals a year in my sleep. And I've got 19,000 people on this email, 75 to 8,000 open it every single week. Um, so just kind of look at that and dive deep into what's going on there and just use the same format and just start doing it and start doing it as as well as you can and know that this is what's going to put you guys in a place where you don't have to prospect anymore because once you build this up to a certain point you don't have to prospect anymore everything's just coming in from this yeah. email right and that's what so what happened to me in 2017 i quit prospecting but and i didn't do social media nothing and this email still produced 100 deals a year i was working five to ten hours a week on my real estate business and i was able to go out and start a coaching business and build a brand while I was still selling a hundred properties a year because of this email. So like, this is the long play. Like you can see how the future is going to lay out kind of play on a 90% organic reach platform that you own versus putting all your eggs in a basket of a platform that could disappear tomorrow. Yeah. Meanwhile, still continuing to crush it on these platforms. Right. So there, there's the social media play. So now this email, everything funnels to the email all the leads you get on social, all the leads at the open houses, all the leads on cold calling, all the leads on, you know, sphere of influence, all the leads on referrals, everything funnels right back to here. And this is where nobody ever forgets who you are. And they're like, right. damn, every week. Oh God, they're a hardworking, honest, dependable, professional. They're everything I want in an agent. You not only were they nice when I talked to them, but now they're backing it up with actions and it's like yeah. real original content, not generic bullshit. Now I know who my agent's going to be. And I'm going to tell everybody about this dude because he's on it. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing with social. You know, I'm posting four to six times a day on Insta. Not everybody hits the like button on every video, but when they see it, they're like, damn, he's working. Mm. Right. And yeah, so definitely. you build this brand around being a very consistent, dependable person and you build trust this way versus a generic once a month is degrading and it's hurting your brand every single time and people are slowly forgetting who you are and continuing to remember the guys in your market doing the weekly emails right yes. and also it just differentiates yourself from everybody else because nobody's going to create the same content as you so <clears throat> you know what it is i think our pain point that we struggle with is you know i've been we, we a few of us have been in the industry for more than six seven years it's been low-hanging fruit for us for for quite some time and we are, we are grit and grind, but we never take the next step to collect that type of data, right? Because we always have people DMing us, hey, I want to buy, I want to sell. So we're always preoccupied with the low-hanging fruit. So basically what you're saying is essentially we have to take the people who aren't necessarily low-hanging fruit, get them in that CRM, get them in that email drip, and really start ramping up on that. Because similar to what Torrin said, you know, we're sending one newsletter a month. I mean, that's obviously not enough. There's, we have there's to a take lot. There's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of people out there that you are defining right now as not low hanging fruit that are low hanging fruit. Gotcha. And the low hanging fruit, a lot of the what you call low hanging fruit, is not low hanging fruit, right? A lot of the low hanging fruit of people that come to you, they're not ready for six months to a year. They're still interviewing mm -hmm. three agents. Yeah. But you're calling that low hanging fruit? No, it's not. They're interviewing three yeah. agents to sell in six months. Some of mm -hmm. them do buy now. Some of them do pick you. Same thing with this. Some of them do pick you now. Some of them pick you later. Some people are interviewing three agents, right? So we got to quit saying low hanging and non low hanging. Everybody's in the same bucket. We got to quit saying this lead. I paid $200 for this lead and this lead was one cent because I just got their information on Red X. So that's a different lead. No, it's not. It's the same person. They're selling you the same contact information that you could get for a penny 
for property owners in your market or even buyers or people looking to buy. They they sold 200 million leads in 2021. There were 6 million transactions, right? It's, it's uh, you have to get into, I'm just trying to help you guys understand that the entire population is the, is the pool of clients and customers, not this segment of the population who might do something now and this segment over here. That's, that's all irrelevant because people change their minds every five seconds. You could call somebody and they say, I'm never going to sell. And then two weeks later, they call back and say, you know what? Something happened. I got to sell. Um, right. All the time, people say, I got to sell and call you back the next day and say, no, I don't want to sell. So it's just like, <clears throat> what's hot, what's cold, what's low hanging, what's no, not low hanging. It's all the same, right? right? So once you get into that mindset that, okay, now we're just going after humans in the market and we got to create, our job is not to find the motivated ones. No, it's to create as many relationships. See, we're in the building, the, 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 uh, the building of your business stage where you're, you're in the building stage. It's just, you got to be a wild man or woman to go out and uh, secure as many relationships, or, like just disregard transactions. Because if you're creating as many relationships as you can, you're not sitting on your hands like you guys are right now saying, how do we get more listings? We're working our sphere. We're putting out content. You know, you should be pounding the phones, pounding the payments, hitting doors, uh, you know, like DMing like 20 people a day, doing handwritten letters. You should be doing all this stuff to try to create conversations, but you got to figure out what works best for you and then package it into a systematic executionable um, plan, right? Where every single day, every morning, when you wake up, you know exactly what you're doing, you know exactly what the outcome is going to be, right? And you know exactly where the bonus hours are in, in the day that give you like that extra credit to really boost everything because you're not lazy. You're going to go out there. You're not just going to do what's asked of you. You're going to do that and more so that you get where you want to go quicker. Right. So we can talk yeah. about the systematic ways to do this. If that's the direction you guys want to go in, I'm just here to help you guys try to organize it as best I can with the little time that we have. Yeah. And that all makes sense. I think that everything you're saying we're not necessarily implementing to its fullest effect. Like we've taken social media and put that on a pedestal and we sort of neglected the email chain. We've neglected to build our own personal database, if you will. And I personally will, you know, I refer to that low hanging fruit because I take those ones. I have a lot of those and I cultivate those. I nurture those. And they might not be a two to three month uh, transaction or closing time frame. They might be a year, but I'm also then neglecting the people who I should have been adding to my database that could have been the same time frame, if that makes sense. Would so, have been. No, not could have been. been. Would have been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They would have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Ricky, what, what are your, like, uh, aside from that weekly email, like, what are the other ways of hitting these people? Obviously, calls. Like, do you have a, a certain routine, like a morning routine, where you're doing, like, that 20 DMs and you're doing maybe 20 phone calls? Or what would yeah. something like that look like? So if it were me and I was building my business, I would wake up, do my morning thing or whatever. By eight o'clock, I'm um, kind of uh, organizing my day, right? So I've got a legal pad. Like this is the one that I took right, took today, wow. right? And I just organize my entire day, like schedule, where I have to be, when I have to be there, things I have to follow up on, hot prospects, so on and so forth. That's all on one sheet of paper that I organized. I went through all my emails and text messages and went through this entire thing where now everything is on one sheet of paper. I know where I got to be, when I got to be there, who, who, where, my, what my projects are, when I have to post on social, you know, wh what's going on. And if I ever get lost in my day, I can just look down and say, okay, this is what I need to be doing right now to maximize. Cause I thought about it beforehand. I took 15 to 20 minutes to organize. Now at 8 30, I'm going to start figuring out who I'm calling today. Is it people I'm calling back for my open house this weekend? Is it for sale by owners expired circle prospecting? Is it Zillow leads? Is it Facebook leads? Is it a sphere of influence, past clients? Who am I calling? I need to know that around 830. I need to start preparing to dial at nine o'clock. Whereas everything is in place where I hit the dial button at nine o'clock from nine to 12 solid calls, hundreds of calls, as many as I can get in between nine and 12. 12 i'm doing lunch or whatever i do and then for the rest of the day i'm looking at marketing which is social media direct mail seo blogs whatever you do for marketing 
you know, video creation, whatever it is, right? So in the afternoon, it's it's marketing and admin and appointments. Okay, so if I need to catch up on admin, if I've got, you know, if I've set appointments, if I'm showing property, if I'm creating videos, whatever I'm doing uh, that day. And then like on Wednesdays, my email, mar my email day, the weekly email goes out. So like Tuesday afternoon will be, uh, the focus will be creating that weekly email. That way it's ready to go out Wednesday morning, right? Monday afternoon could be like Monday or Wednesday afternoon could be like where I sit down and come up with 10 really good video ideas for like one minute videos, short form videos. And then I literally film all 10 of them. That way I have one to go out every day, um, do that once a week. But I've got to be on the phone from 9 to 12, solid, ignoring everything else that comes through. If a client's calling, I'm going to answer that. Like, as long as I'm on the phone, uh, cultivating new business, creating new relationships. So, like, once you start breaking all this stuff down and realize that um, everything's kind of subjective and the, you know, you're, we're all brainwashed to think that the leads we buy are worth more than just random people in the market, which is false. Then we start to say, okay, well, listen, it, it, every single lead gen like path is, is exactly the same. Okay. No matter if it's social media, cold calling, you know, uh, open houses, fear referrals, regardless. Okay. The process is data collection so that you can then talk to them so that you can then see if there's a possibility of conversion and then whether they convert or not, it's remarketing to forever. It's the same path every single time. Data, talk, convert, remarket, same path. So if you start to realize it's just a data collection game so that you can then talk to people to see what you can do to help them to see if they want to buy or sell, you know, in terms of real estate and then remarket to them forever. It's like, okay, the very top of that funnel is data collection. Okay. So who are my, who are my very targeted, highest quality leads that I want? Well, it's property owners that own the exact properties and the exact subdivisions and condo complexes that I want to sell in. Okay. How do I get their data so that I can then talk to them to see what I can do to help them to then remarket to? Well, Red X will give you any of them that you want to for about a penny a piece, like one and a half cents, email, phone number the whole nine yards. So I can pick a subdivision, get all the data. So now I've data collected for a penny instead of $40 on Facebook, $20, $1 on Facebook, you know, $200 on Zillow, whatever, right? Or or even if I spend a bunch of time just knocking on doors, I still don't have all the data unless they talk to me. I can literally click two buttons and get all the data I want to of any subdivision in my area. Now I have all the data. Like that, instead of doing all the work most people do to create videos and do social and pay Zillow and all this stuff, I can just go like that for, for a penny and have as many as I want. Now, what's the next step of the funnel? Talk to, get the data, call them, introduce, see what I could do to help, see if they want to do something, right? Remarket to forever. It's real simple stuff. My goal every day from nine to 12 is to create as many friends with property owners as I possibly can because at the end of the day, when somebody closes a deal and you ask the buyer or and seller, how'd you pick your agent? The most common answer is I had a friend in the in the business. Yeah. By that's a overwhelming. It's overwhelming that answer. And so if that's the case, my job now becomes how do I create as many friends in the market as humanly possible with the exact people I want to do business with? Because you can't talk to every single person in your market, right? I don't know how many million of millions of people are in Boston. But you can't talk to all those people in your entire life. You'll never talk to everybody. So now, okay, let's get smart about it. Let's get efficient about it. Let's break it all the way down to the exact people, the, the highest quality people. Well, that's that's you've picked out the subdivision. You know, you want to sell houses there. You know the price point. This is the best. You know, you this is the dream market. You get to pick, right? So not only is it like, oh, with Zillow and Facebook, you're getting random people in the market for a god-awful expensive price for random people but over here for a penny i can get the exact person i want unless it's like becomes pretty obvious that you can convert them and they seem like you know like a pretty motivated person is the number one objective then just to connect and basically be become as much of a friend as you can in that short amount of time you have 
So when you are sending them that weekly email, they have a bit more of a, like a face to the name type thing where it means something as opposed to just being a random email. Yeah. So the number one skill is making people feel comfortable with you, right? Not closing deals. The, the number yep. one skill is, is to develop the communication skills to make people feel comfortable with you and at ease with you immediately within the first couple seconds. Right. And then you never try to sell their house. You use their house as an excuse to talk to them, to see if you can get to know them, to see what it is they might want to do later if they already have an agent they're working with. And if you can stay in touch and help them. So when, when you give that great first impression that you're not here to sell, you're here to help and you're a hard worker, you're dependable, you're honest. They're going to be like, man, this, this agent is different. This hit me way different. This was a great first impression. And then they start getting the weekly email and they're like, wow, you know, great first impression. Now I'm never going to forget this person. Three years later, when I decide to do something, this is who I'm calling. I don't care who calls me and tries to tell me this or that. This is the one I'm going to call. So you put yourself in a very high probability situation that they are going to use you as their agent and refer everybody to you. As you do this, will this win everyone over? No, no system will. But what we got to do is put ourselves in the best position possible to have the highest percentage of people we run into do business with us now and later, refer everybody to us. That's why I love the email because it's like 90% organic reach versus like 5% on the social platforms. And it's your database. You've got it, right? It doesn't matter what happens, you know, to to the platforms. So like it's, it's a way to... to it's not like you will have some stuff go to the promotion folders. You will have people that never check emails. You will blah, 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 right? You'll have people that check your emails, love your stuff, get all the information they need and go use other agents. Um, all that will happen. You'll have tons of people unsubscribe. That's great. It filters out the people that doesn't want to do business with you and then continues to provide value to the people who do want to do business with you. All that stuff is going to happen. Uh, but that's all just part of becoming a top producer. If you're a top producer doing 100 deals, 200, 300 deals, you're going to lose 100, 200, 300 deals that year. You're going to have people, un tons of people unsubscribe. You're going to have all this stuff. But look at where you are. You know, every day that goes by, let's say you add five people to your database and you have five people unsubscribe to your database every day your database number stays exactly the same. Every day that goes by that that number is exactly the same, your database is becoming more and more valuable every single day because you're filtering out the people that don't want to do business with you while adding people who do. And out of the five that, that you add, maybe one or two of those unsubscribe, right? But you're still adding this, like you're still adding to the condensed group of people in your database who just really love you. And the, and the, and the larger you can build that up, that base up, the better you're going to be. So, you know, it's like social, like I'll have 6,000 people follow me in a month and 3,000 unfollow me. I was up 3,000 that month, but it's like, man, I wish I could, who cares about the following, the number, the net number. The The fact is, is that every day that goes by, my account is worth more and more and more. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. a, it's a, uh, it's an aging thing. It, like it's a maturing thing of your, of your business. As your business continues to mature, and you filter out the people that don't and, and the people that do, it just becomes more and more valuable. Ricky, how do you incorporate text messaging with emails as well? Are you using some type of like uh, automated text services or are you like physically texting clients? Like, I don't do anything automated. Okay. Just so you guys know. Okay. Um, the only things I do automated is like, if I say, Hey, DM me the word this and I'll send you information that's yeah. automated. But outside of that, I'm not automating like text or emails or weekly emails or emails I send to agents. All that stuff is uh, communications that I actually wrote right then as when it, when it was sent, that means I had just wrote it and sent it myself. Right. So individualizing text opposed to like any type of like mass text. To no, like... I'll do mass. I'll do mass text, but okay, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's not automated. Right. 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 I'm, I'm actually writing those. Um, Right. So, no so here's the thing about text. Okay. The, from what I can tell, it's great and it should be implemented immediately in your business. A hundred percent. I still, at this point, I think it'll change. I think this will change, but at this point I still love email the most, even though text message is a higher organic reach. Um, and the reason being is because 
right now business in your text is still on the spammy side. People still look at it as uh, like people are still people like this is where for more friends and family are communicating versus like business spamming and stuff. Whereas email, you're getting like spam like a hundred a day. So it's like like you're we're used to getting marketed to on our emails versus text messaging. And I think that'll change. I just think it's gonna take some time. But I think like I use it. Uh, you know, I try to use it in a very I try to be very smart about how I use it, um, in terms of, you know, not selling as much on tax, uh you know, giving, you know, bringing the most value that I can, um, you know, stuff of that nature. So I think you just have to kind of be careful, like don't put them in the same boat. Like what you send out via email may not be the same thing that you, it's just like YouTube and Instagram. I mean, you don't really, necessarily, you don't put the same stuff right. on YouTube and Instagram. Right. Where, where do you, where do you see like trends moving i know you're you're obviously big on instagram and email do you see <clears throat> type of like shift in trends or shifts in marketing that you've observed over the past couple of years or anything else that you've implemented other than the instagram and email like small tactics or anything like that on a daily basis yeah it's always changing i went from posting like once or twice a day to four to six times a day and i went from literally having zero followers a day to 200 a day New and followers. You that from, so that's just basically from the algorithm ramping up on Instagram. Exactly. 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 When you're posting a lot, when you're hitting people like, like if you post at eight o'clock, you're missing the person that sleeps in till 10 because they work all day. Mm -hmm. Or if you, you know, if you post it, if you post at 12 and that's it, you didn't post at eight, then you miss the person that wakes up at eight, checks Instagram and then has to work all day and can't check their phone till four. And so when you post, throughout the day you're hitting everybody right you're hitting you're maximizing the amount of people that actually may see your content that's why i post so much because that's how the instagram algorithm works right and then the more time people spend on your content whether it's a post a story uh whatever you know the more the algorithm is going to push it out to more people organically you know so there's the post a lot part of it then there's the post good content part of it they've balanced out the um engagement on video versus images mm -hmm. that was really cool they did that about a month ago yep. i'm getting way more engagement on on images than i do uh, video so i try yeah. to you just you just have to mix it up when it comes to that but for me when i look at all the platforms and i see kind of what tiktok's done um with their algorithms in the past 12 months and and then you know conversely what instagram has done um, Instagram is like really becoming a beast, you know, like they're kind of emerging, um, you know, as like right. the top yeah. for me, like they've kind of, they're kind of like, they have it all, you know, they have DMs, they have, you know, um, the short form, you know, happening, like it's happening. Um, they've got images. You can really kind of post any format video you want. They've got stories like it's popping. Right. So we'll see what happens. It's kind of fun now watching all the different platforms, um, you know, compete against each other for the most eyeballs and stuff. So that's fun. Yeah. Ricky, would you ever post something like to, to get to five to six times a day? Like, I feel like it would be relatively hard to make sure each piece of that is like truly valuable to who you're trying to get it out to. If you cannot ensure that each piece was actually valuable, would you not do it? Or do you still think it's the value is just getting your face out there and like yeah, increasing would, the algorithm? Well, I mean, I'd have to like, if it's just absolutely horrible content, then we got to go back to the drawing board on yeah. your, yeah. um, your studio, your setup, you know, your gear, like your, your scripting, your editing, you know, like that's a whole different conversation, you know, like why is the content not as great? Is it great production it's just not good info like there's a lot of different questions there but yeah more like the info like we do a lot of educational stuff you know I yeah mean, we could probably yeah, no, come up with a lot of that stuff but like five educational things a day like would that be too much or what what would you mix in with that depends on what the goal is for the business you know with the educational stuff you know if i'm just a real estate agent then um one a day is plenty um yeah. because i'm out here trying to show property 
um, set appointments, prospect. I'm doing all these other things. I'm able to go out and create five to six pieces of content a day because that's what I do full time. Yeah. You know, I'm not showing property anymore. I'm not prospecting to build my real estate business. Real estate business is built. So I have the time to go out and create all that content. Real estate agents don't who are trying to build their business. So like I say, for an agent, you should set aside a half a day once a week to time block to brainstorm 10 really good ideas and film them all right then in that day. And that way you've got 10 a week that you can yeah. post, which will at least get you one a day, right? So if you could do like one short form video a day that you can put that short form on YouTube, TikTok, um, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all the different places you can put that vertical style short form content. If you can put one of those and then like an image, you know, like where you've got two posts a day, um, that's crushing it, honestly, for an agent. And then, and then if you take that and of course engage with everybody that engages with you, but also search your area and start engaging with people that aren't following you, that you're not connected to, and start trying to create some back and forth with people that are in your market who uh, who are on these platforms that you know, you're not already connected with, you know, and they start going back and forth, and then they go to your profile and see, oh, they're an agent in Boston. Oh, look at their content twice a day. Wow, this is educational stuff. Cool. I love the images. Oh, follow, you know, and then it kind of starts to go down that rabbit hole where you're DMing them about what they might want to do real estate wise, if they have an agent, if you can stay in touch, what's their phone number, email, stuff like that. How do you feel about paid ads in terms of like you talked about Red X, right? You you know, it's on the scent for for a lead compared to paying tens and thousands for Zillow on. Yeah. How do you translate that in terms of uh, your branding with social media? Are you doing about paid ad spends with a lot of things right now? Or are you, you just trying to bring in your organic network and just filter out people well you have to pay for ads um you know you can only you can go up really far organically but right. um you want some paid stuff so with red x they have ad builder so the people that you're collecting the data from you can run ads directly to those people so the way facebook ads and instagram ads work generally is is you run an ad to a geographical location with not with with just not a call to action just a um, just an ad they can engage with. And then you um, filter out the people that engage with the ad. And then you run another ad that has a call to action to it. That way you kind of filter out these, you know, 18 year olds living in their mom's basement and trolls and stuff that end up hitting your landing page. And you're like, Oh, I got a lead. Oh, this is crappy lead. Oh, Facebook leads suck. No, they don't suck. You just have to do it in stages and then filter through the population to get to the people that want to do business with you. Right. Well, with this, Day one, you can run call to action ads um, with Ad Builder um, to the exact people you want to do business with because every dollar is just hitting someone that you want to do business with, a property owner that you've picked up in Red X. They allow you to to run ads directly to that database. So like GeoLeads Plus, you have to get Plus because that gives you the emails. They find them on Facebook through the emails and cell phone numbers, right? So like with GeoLeads Plus, you can get 7,500 property owners a month. So even if you don't call them, just get the 75. Whereas right. like after like two, three, four months, you've got like 40, 50,000 property owners there and growing by 7,500 every month, you know, and just constantly be running ads to those people as you're calling them. They're recognizing who you are, right? You probably picked up a bunch of leads from the ads. You're just building like massive brand that way for really efficient prices because all the ads are running directly to the people in that database, yeah. you know, get expireds plus and go back like 10 years worth of expires, withdrawns and cancels. There's no telling how many are in Boston, probably a million, right? Over the last 10 years, boom, start running ads to those million people that had a property that expired in the last 10 years as you're calling through that list. But yeah, you, you can do all that right there on, uh, on red X. Are you taking your email list and making, because you can make you an can audience do, through with email list too. Are you, you doing can do that, that so too? You can, you uh, can add your, you can add your email list to Red X in there and use the same. So you, you, you create the ads right there on the platform. Um, and you don't have to go to, to the Red X, I mean, to the uh, Facebook ad manager and go through all that craziness. You build it right there. Just like step one, two, three, four. 
you say what the ad wants, you get to preview it, you just boom, and then bam, it's going out. Let's see, I'll send you this. This is a $150 discount for Red X. Um, if it were me, I'd get GeoLeads Plus, Expireds Plus, the multi-line dialer, and Ad Builder. And just get as many leads as you can with those two products and um and call them with the multi-line dialer, but then run ads to them for like ten dollars a day or something. Um, I mean, I'm I'm doing it right now. I've got ads running yeah. for all the people that I've picked up in Red X over the years. I'm running it right now. I had after the I'm running five dollars a day. After the first day, I had 311 people. Half of them got hit twice, and I had eight website clicks that went to my website to search property and stuff. So like for five dollars, I had 311 people in my market. You know, half of them hit twice, and eight clicks right there. Do you always so when I do a lot of ads, I I stay on Instagram, for instance, I'll do send message because I want to start the conversation um and just go right into the DMs and start a dialogue. Are you I'm afraid if I send them to like a, my website or something like that, they might look and they might like it, but maybe not actually have that they might never actually connect. Are you doing the opposite? Are you sending them to your website first or yeah, I just ran it as a test to see what would happen with the ad builder. Right. Rad Builder is a new product in the last like month and a half. So oh, okay. I just got on there last week. I mean, a lot of my students are using it, but I haven't used it myself. So last week I got on there to mess around and create an ad, see how it all worked and everything. Um, but yeah, like to send you a DM is great. Whatever your method is on the call to action, where whatever link you want them to go to, um, <laughs> You know, it doesn't really matter to me there. Whatever you feel like is the most efficient, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I think it's a matter of split testing and figuring out what, what makes the most sense with that. Um, also at uh, zerodiamond.com, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, all my scripts, there's videos of me calling prospects live. I don't know if you guys have seen all that stuff. There's <laughs> like seven or eight free courses there, yes. all kinds of stuff. Yep. Yeah, I have a I've logged in and been on it. Um I'll check check into that more. Ricky, Look at the scripts. About, talk about your CRM real quick. Like obviously you have an email list. Are you integrating the CRM with that as well? Like how are you No, no, I don't I don't I mean I you know I've got everybody in constant contact so they okay. can get the weekly email, but outside of that I don't okay. have a CRM of any sorts. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean it basically just collects a bunch of data I'll never use. Like, I don't need yeah. to know when their dog's birthday is and stuff. Um, you know, I'm just like, I'm, yeah, I'm, deals. I'm, I mean, my thing is service, right? So like yeah. when they call me, I'm jumping on whatever it is. They're like, wow, Ricky's on it. I'll never use another agent. That's it. It's done deal. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, you're doing the most at that point. You're like, all right, what else more can you do? You're not going to go call up their dog and say happy no. birthday. No, 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 no. I mean, like if you can somehow systemize it, but like if people like the time, if you spend 30 minutes a week, okay, just a week, 30 minutes a week inputting data into a CRM that you're never going to use, that's 26 hours that year, working hours. Do you know how much you can get done in 26 hours? How many, how many deals you can get put together in 26 hours? It's ridiculous. But people think, oh, 30 minutes a week, oh, that's not much. Yeah, it is. It adds up to be really, really massive and could really be the difference in you exploding in your business and not exploding, honestly. Um, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. No, yeah, you're doing, you, you're doing everything that you need to do to ensure that you're hitting these people. I feel like there's a lot of fluff in the industry where people are telling you, hey, you know, go do this, go do that. Like, but they're not actually doing the common practices of what really makes a business wholesome, similar to what you're doing. And uh, I, that's my approach, very similar to yours in terms of like, you got to do what you need to get done. You're a business and that's it. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I just sense. cut out all the fluff, man. You know, yeah. I just cut all the fat off and I'm just like, okay, where's the meat? Let me just focus on the meat, yeah. you know? And like, it's not a perfect system. Of course, there's a lot of things that I'm missing within what I do, but, um, you know, my, what, how I do things is just an example for you guys of how something could be done. You know, you guys can take what I do and go turn it into whatever you want to turn it into. Right. No, this has been super helpful. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. No, it's been a lot of good stuff. 
Yeah, this is honestly, Ricky, this was amazing. Like just the short amount of time we, you know, the systems you have in place, it's just, it's like all the baseline <clears throat> stuff that, you know, guys, we should be all implementing this too, you know, on a daily basis, you know, with the with ramping up videos as well. I personally, I'll admit, I'll be the first one. I mean, I have a backlog of probably 70 videos that I can post and I was thinking, okay, I'll do like three a week, but I never even tried doing it more than one a day. So it's like, I got to kind of start there and just see how I can execute that. And yeah. You need more consistency, you know, at least once a day. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Last many questions or feedback comments? No, I asked mine. That was, that was awesome. I appreciate hey, your time, man. I don't know if you can hear me, Ricky. Can you hear I me? I can. I can. Awesome. Thank you for, <clears throat> for guiding us and spending your time. I know your time is valuable. It sounds, it's funny because in real estate, you know, you, people want to, you want to connect by being your authentic self. Like you want to be personalized, but it sounds like the way you get to that is depersonalized. It's like, it's like a machine. It's like a system. I, I, do I have that right? Like th here's, here's what it is, right? Yeah. It's, it's, you have to think speed until you get in front of a client and then you got to think quality. So when you're in front of someone and you're talking to a prospect, it's like the world stops and nothing matters but them. But then when you're off that call or out in front of that prospect, you got to think speed, 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 right? How many can I rack up? How many, you know, calls can I make? You know, how many deals can I do? But then when you get in front of somebody again, now everything stops. Now we're in slow motion again. So this push and pull of speed versus quality mm -hmm. is kind of where the big business is built mm -hmm. because honestly, you know, everything revolves around how deep the relationships are that you can create with your prospects. If I would rather you have a call session where you had, you talk to three people for 30 minutes a piece, then dial through and talk to 30 people for two minutes a piece. Right. Okay. That would be more valuable to me. Um, you know, so a lot of people are like, I want to make this many dials. Well, um, I don't really look at dials. I look at hours on the phone you know, I can't really control how many dials because I don't know how many people are going to pick up today. I don't know how if people are going to want to be talkative. If I run into one person that wants to talk for an hour. Um, so, you know, you could have a call session where you dial 45 numbers um, over over the course of two hours. And you could have a call session where you dial 220 numbers over two hours. Right. And the results from the 45 calls could be way better than the 220 calls. So it's not always about the numbers. It's about speed until you're in front of someone, then quality, right? Then speed again, then quality, then speed again. Yeah, it makes sense. It's yeah. like uh, you're using breadth, like covering a large portion to get to depth. Like you, that's a, that's what I hear you saying. Yeah, because like some people will spend so much time on one client, yeah. Yeah. right? To give service. Oh, I'm giving service. I'm giving service. I'm giving service. And it's like, man, you could have gave that client the same warm and fuzzy feeling that you really care about them in a tenth of the time that you spent with them. That's fast. And then, and then, and then you could have done that. You could have gave ten, nine more people that same warm and fuzzy that you're just care about them so much in that same amount of time. Yeah. But people use this as a blanket to cover up the fact that they don't. They're scared to go talk to nine more people. So when they find somebody, they're like a leech. They just hang on for dear life, hoping they don't have to talk to anybody else today. It's like, man, you better be trying to figure out how to make them feel incredible, finish the conversation and get to nine more people today before the sun goes down. You know, otherwise you're just yeah. going to be an average agent. There's got to be volume somewhere, I think, is what the bottom line is. Like quality's great, but where's volume? You know, if you want to have this massive business, at some point it's got to be about a volume of people, not just quality, you know, time spent and servicing. It's got to there's got to be this massive number, this high volume and high frequency of conversations and people and relationships, or you're never going to get where you want to go. Uh, I got a question from one of my team members who's on FaceTime with me. Juan, go ahead. Uh, Ricky, so my question is, do you have a, or at least when you first started calling, from 9 to 12, do you have a, a goal? I know you like to say five new friends in the market a day. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours have I dedicated to make these calls? So if I say I'm going to call from nine to 12 every day, my goal is, is to stay on the phone solid from nine to 12. I can't control what the results are of that call session, whether I dialed 45 numbers, 220 numbers, created five new friends, created 15 new friends. I don't know what the results are going to be really, but my goal is, is to make calls solid from nine to 12. 
that's one thing I can control. I can't control what happens on the calls right now. I can start to get better and better at making my calls and get to where, you know, I'm pretty good at mapping out what those results might look like over time. But especially in the beginning, my goal is how many hours are going to make Am I dedicated to make, if I committed to making calls today and I want to hit those hours. Well, good guys. Good spending some time with you. I hope this helped and brought you some value Definitely. and um, let's stay in touch and let me know how the journey's going and maybe we can hop on another call at some point soon. Yeah, we'll, awesome. get you a plane ticket you, Boston. we'll get you a hotel for the weekend in Boston. Anytime you want, you can come up to our for team, real. man. For real, seriously, man. Like anytime you want to come down here, seriously, give us a call. We'll uh, happy to have you. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys want to put together a big event or something, um, I'm happy to happy to do that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, just let me know. All right, cool, man. We appreciate cool. your time. Appreciate guys, be man. good. Thanks, Thanks Ricky. Have a good rest of your week. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it brought you tons of value. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to put the next video right here for you so you don't have to go anywhere. You can just click this video to keep that Ricky train rolling. Hey, we'll see you guys on this next video, and I'll talk to you soon.